Today I'm going to reveal practical Instagram advice that helped me gain 50,000 followers in just 3 weeks. It's going to be a no fluff to the point video driven by data. For every advice I give you, I will show you proof of performance. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Alright, so before we move forward, there are 3 things that I want to tell you. One is that for 1.5 years, I was actually stuck at 50k. So it took me one and a half years to go from zero followers to 50k followers. Why? Because my entire perception, my entire strategy, my entire set of processes were actually not very efficient. But it's very, very important to highlight that once I figured out these small, small nudges, these small, small optimizations, it took me very little time to go from 50k to 100k. And on the right side, I'm showing you the screenshots as well. So it was around December 15th when I actually realized that this is the plan that I need to implement. And you can see that around New Year's, there was a huge spike. And now it has gone low. And I spoke to other creators as well. And they've told me that this is how usually Instagram works. So in this video, we're going to do like a deep investigation on why some of my reels did really well. And overall, this is the graph that creators see in the longer run. So you would have an upwards graph, but obviously you can't really expect your graph to always go up. So there will always be times when you will have these moments as well. And if you zoom in, you might be at this part of your journey or you might be at this part of the journey. That is irrelevant because these ups and downs are going to come naturally. The most important thing here is to change your strategy and to understand why you are succeeding in the first place. Because if you don't understand why things are working for you, you will not be able to repeat the peaks. So the aim is that even if I go low, at this point, I should know how to come back up again and come back at a higher peak. So I'm just gonna share some very, very to the point practical strategies. So on the right side, I have taken a screenshot of my current insights. So if you have a business account, you can actually see the insights of your audiences. Here you would notice that they have these different groups of people, right? And when you apply for brand collaborations, when brands reach out to you, they ask you for a screenshot of this insights page. So they usually ask for last 30 days. Sometimes they ask for the last 90 days or six months as well. Now notice how majority of my audience is between 18 to 24 and 24 to 34. This is by intent. When you post on Instagram, you have to understand that you are supposed to sell to a specific user persona. If you're selling to everyone, you are selling to no one. So when we design products, we actually sit down and figure out who is our end user and we make a user persona. You have to make a user persona for your Instagram as well. So you have to sit down and actually make this imaginary set of people and figure out what is their age, what is the language they speak, how much do they earn, how do they speak, what do they watch, what kind of music do they listen to, all these small small details and every time I write a real script or I design a carousal, I ask myself that would this person consume that content? So in my case, I will tell you what my user persona is. My user persona is a bunch of people between the ages of 18 to 24. I'm targeting this chunk right here who are interested in technology, design and psychology. Now I am slowly entering a new phase where I'm also discovering AI simply because I'm very, very interested in it. And to be honest, AI is this very gorgeous intersection of design and psychology and how the brain works and technology. And we'll talk about that positioning as well. But the most important decision here is that you decide who you are selling to. So let's just say that you are a lifestyle creator, right? And you decide that my user persona is, let's just say that you're into fashion and lifestyle. And you say that my user persona is 18 to 22. If you decide 18 to 22, you have to understand that this age group does not earn a lot. So content like use a scarf in five different ways or I got all of these items under 500 bucks. These kinds of reels would target this user persona. 
On the other hand, if you are a content creator who wants to enter a very luxurious segment, maybe around international travel, if you are wearing very expensive clothes and traveling around the world and showing how fancy your life is, then you're not targeting this crowd because this crowd is not going to relate to you. You are primarily targeting people above 24 who are earning enough money to afford the experiences that you are showing off. But the problem with most creators is that they get confused. Their content is catering to a certain age, their thumbnails are catering to some other age group, the scripts are catering to somebody else. So it's very, very important to first decide your user persona. Next is you need to align your goals with Instagram goals. So Instagram as an app has certain goals, right? It's an application that really wants maximum users to enjoy their app, to return on their app and spend maximum time on their app. And I would recommend you folks to read this book called Principles by Ray Dalio. Personally, it will completely change your life. It talks about this concept where it says that evolution as a whole optimizes for its own growth and not for a specific individual. If you are in alignment with evolution's goals, it will push you, it will promote you. But if you're standing in between evolution's goal, it will simply move you out of the way or it's gonna be very difficult for you to survive. So you have to understand what does Instagram want from me and in the next image I will show you how you optimize for that. Third principle is that you understand compound interest. So let's just say I started my content creation at day zero and then um, today I am maybe at uh, day 700, right? And for a very long time, for two third of my journey, I was probably stuck at zero to 50K, right? And suddenly I went from 50K to 100K. A lot of people, when they have goals, they feel that if I'm at day zero and I want to reach at 100K in maybe one year, then they divide 100k by 365 days and say that oh there's an x amount of number and if they are working for two three months and if they don't get those x amount of followers every single day they start to panic this is not how growth works in real life in real life compound interest takes place so this is how the graph goes you would go like this and suddenly you would get your just dues so I don't know if you've ever studied about latent heat or how water is boiled, but basically when you're boiling water, a lot of heat is accumulated in the beginning and you can't see the water boiling, but it's all happening under the surface and suddenly it shoots up. There's a plant as well. I think it's called the Chinese bamboo tree, uh, which takes a lot of time to grow like for years and months, like for a very long time, you would not see any growth coming from the soil and then suddenly it shoots up. That is the concept that I want you to understand because when you are working really hard, it is very easy to get demotivated that I'm not getting paid or I'm not getting enough recognition. Should I just reduce my quality and just go aggressive with the quantity? Don't do that. I have seen people who've done that and they are stuck now. So they reached a specific height and they got stuck there. Now, one of the most fascinating concepts is of market positioning. And to make you understand how this practically works, I'm going to take you through my evolution on Instagram as to how I evolved, right? So in the beginning when I had just started, so this is my insights of my reels of the last year. So you would see that I was talking about design, about building your personal brand, how to sell at premiums. And this is my current status. On the left side, you would see that, and these are my best reels by the way, because I've archived all the ones that failed. So at that point, when I used to touch above 5,000 views, I used to be like very, very happy. Compare my stats from last year to the past three months, you would realize that a lot of my reels are going above 50K. Why did this happen? Many reasons, but let's just discuss the ones that are very, very apparent. Six, seven months ago, when you would visit my Instagram, my bio would say that you can learn UX design. I teach UX design. And now, today, when you come to my bio, you will realize that I talk about design and tech. Now, I'll show you how this happened. Firstly, when I started with UX design, the issue was that a lot of people didn't even know what UX design is. So then I rephrased it as I design apps. Even in parties, when someone asks me what I do, 
I don't say I am a UX designer because if that person does not know what I do, that person is not going to ask me a second question and the conversation stops. Now I introduce myself as I design apps. So for them it's very fascinating. They're like, "Oh, you design apps. That is so interesting." And then the conversation takes a head. Now they're interested. I realize that instead of restricting myself around UX design, I should broaden my bubble. I should broaden this section of people that I'm targeting and actually talk about design and tech. Now, if you notice, if this is UX, this is design and tech. Right? And it's not a very big bubble because probably this is going to be design. probably digital design and probably like this big big bubble is going to be the entire subject of design itself so it's a, i'm not playing in this domain right here right i'm not going on a very macro level subject where the niche is too broad but i'm also not staying here where the niche was very very micro it is very very difficult to scale in a field where your niche is too new is too new So it's not like you will not hit 100k followers you will get there but your growth is going to be slower so if you are running out of patience you should look and ask yourself what is it that you want do you want numbers or do you want to build a very loyal audience in a very small niche both ways are absolutely correct so i transitioned to this area i wanted to function in this area and that is what i did so i changed my market positioning uh by changing the bubble in which i operate then second i started building processes i prioritized building processes and systems instead of panicking when i wasn't getting any results so i told myself and this is something that i've learned from ankur varako as well even the entire concept of positioning and niche all of the building user persona thing this is something that i learned from ankur sir from his cohort so i was a part of his youtube cohort but somehow i have used some of those lessons in instagram as well and sort of tweaked them according to my own use case so i realized that if i make a process of saying two reels every week two carousels every week a hook based script like i'm building processes around everything right like better thumbnails a thumbnails where there's a process for the colors typography the images like if i set systems for everything and if i follow those systems then the systems will take care of the result and i will not get obsessed with the end result and it really helped me like that mindset shift where i was focusing on building systems and processes and then just letting my processes take care of the result I'm telling you that entire thing was very very scalable. Third, I prioritized making content for others and not for myself. For a very long time, I would find something very fascinating, very insightful and I would just record a reel on it. I realized that not everybody thinks like me, not everybody likes to hear about similar stuff. I sat down and I asked myself, am I making content for myself? or for other people and the answer is that if i'm on instagram i am serving my followers i am serving the people who have come on instagram because if they give me their 60 seconds they expect me to educate them or entertain them or just make worth of their 60 seconds so i realize that i want to research about what people are watching let's talk about aligning your goals with instagram goals you need to design your content and maximize around certain metrics so you have to rely on data let's just understand what would instagram want now all of these theories are assumptions and hypotheses there's a big chance that all of these theories are absolutely wrong but they have worked for me and this is my hypothesis that instagram wants their users to first of all download the app and then stay on the app for as long as they can and return to the app as well so we have to maximize on these two metrics if i let instagram achieve these two goals i can then hope that instagram would reward me back so there are two three things that i want you to observe this is the instagram's ui and let's see how it is designed here on the very right side something which is very closest to my thumb there is the save icon this is closest to my thumb then you have like comment and share and they are at the bottom of the screen so obviously instagram wants you to 
play with these options the most. Now we've spoken about Hicks law and Fitts law, all of these things in our UX design sessions, you can always check those out later. But in this case, when I am playing the reel, here also it wants me to like, comment and share. If my reels trigger these interactions, maybe Instagram will boost it to more people. So what I will do is, I can either create excitement within the person who's watching my reel. When I create excitement, that person is most likely to either like it or share it with his or her friends. I might be able to trigger some conversations. Someone watches my reel and be like, oh, this is something that is worth talking about. I have some views on it. Let me put a comment. Let me appreciate this. Let me point out about this. I can strike conversations which would increase my comments or I can give value. When I give value, it results in a lot of saves. This is where things become very interesting because now when I write a reel, I ask myself, what am I maximizing? Is my script maximizing excitement? Is it maximizing conversations? Or is it giving so much value that a person will save it? Because the thing is, what does Instagram want from these features? What is happening when someone saves your reel on Instagram? When a user saves something on Instagram, it is basically building a library. So for the user, deleting Instagram is equivalent to burning his big library of content that he has been saving for a very, very long time. So when you save more posts, it actually shows, it actually gives a clear intent that you will return to this app or at least return to this piece of content. When you like something, comment something or share something, you are basically helping Instagram leverage the network effect. If you're sharing more content to your friends, they're going to share it to their friends and it's just going to compound. So I ask myself, what is this content for? So when I make really value driven content, let's just say value driven carousals, I don't expect a lot of likes or shares or comments, but I expect a lot of saves because I'm giving value to my current followers. On the other hand, when I feel like I really want to boost up my following, I maximize these three things. So I focus on excitement. I focus on triggering conversations. I focus on building content that person A would be very excited to share to person B, right? So AI tools or resources or stuff like that, like stuff that you don't really see. And trust me, you will make 10 great reels, but only one will pay your dues. So it's going to be like, you'll get 10K uh, and then 10K again, and you know, 10K again, and then suddenly 50K and maybe 10K again. So the thing is, you are actually getting your dues. You had some dues pending here, you had some dues pending here, and you get all of them in this one shot. But it's very, very important to recognize the causes of success, otherwise you will not be able to replicate it. Similarly for causes of failure as well, right? It's very important to understand both of these things. Now, if you're building your own social media presence or even working at a company, you will need at least three people in your marketing team, a copywriter, a video editor, and a graphic designer. If you don't have enough budgets, you can use this AI tool to build your brand online. Simplified is an all-in-one AI-powered platform that lets you create professional quality designs, content, videos, and social media posts. It includes four incredible tools that basically cover all your marketing needs. The graphic design tool has a wide range of templates. You can choose templates of your choice, create color palettes, remove backgrounds, and erase unneeded parts of your pictures. It is actually very, very effective. You can see the demos in front of you. Their AI writer can quickly type content for your blog, websites, or social media reels. You need to select your template, then enter your topic. They also have this advanced options toggle where you can select the number of results that you need and also set parameters, whether you want something original or very creative or extremely imaginative. Once you enter your requirements, the AI writer is gonna come up with multiple ideas in less than a minute. You will have access to professional grade content in just a few minutes. For videos, you can import your own footage or use one of their templates for YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Plus, with its easy to use timeline editor, you'll be able to create professional videos in no time. In fact, you can manage all your social media content in one single place. With their planning and publishing tool, you can schedule posts in advance. 
get reports and analytics on your social media performance and schedule your posts using their calendar feature. Simplified makes it very easy to schedule and plan your content across all social media channels. Now, if you're not a business owner and just a creative professional like a graphic designer or a video editor or a copywriter, then this tool is even more important for you. Trust me when I say this, your job is not going to be replaced by AI. It is most probably going to be replaced by a human being who knows how to use AI. Make sure you're making yourself aware about such tools. And while you're using these tools, strengthen your skills at prompting because what you type is very, very important. You need to know what to ask. So make sure you are regularly practicing your prompts, which is called prompt engineering. Strengthen your understanding of human psychology. Try to understand how persuasion works, because if you blend the usage of AI tools with understanding of the human brain, human emotions, persuasion and overall prompt engineering, trust me, your job is not going to go anywhere. In fact, you will have clients left, right and center. Start investing time in building awareness around AI tools. Check out Simplified AI today because it's actually a very powerful tool. I will paste their link in description. So coming back to our second advice, which is using insights data for your direction. So the thing is a lot of people just focus on their views, but there's a lot that your Instagram metrics can tell you and you have to regularly track your metrics and become better at finding patterns. So the thing is inside your insights panel, you can go to the reach column and actually see all your reels numbers one by one. So you can see uh, when did you have maximum engagement on your live videos, you can see on your reels and you have to figure out what made this reel so special. So then you go inside a specific reel and also see, oh, these, this time the saves were high, this time the comments were high. So what do I need to leverage? What are the patterns that I can see? And just succeeding is not enough, right? So we spoke about this earlier that you should know at least 50% of the reasons why something succeeded. So I read this book called Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss and there Peter Thiel was talking about this concept that sometimes a lot of people, when they fail, they look back and find, let's just say, two reasons of why they failed. But turns out that there were three, four, five. There were five reasons for why they failed, but they could only identify two reasons. So the next time they open something or the next time they run a business, they will fail because of reason number three. And maybe they find reason number three, but still miss out on recognizing reason number four and five. So they will do another startup and then figure out that, oh, there were more reasons for why I failed in the first place. So it's, it's the same with success as well, right? So you really need to try to figure out that are my scripts working? Is it the thumbnail? Is it the lighting? Is it the duration of the video? and set two days per week, minimum. This is minimum for Instagram. Let's just say Tuesdays and Fridays, and then go into your insights and see at what time your audience opens the app. So there is a data panel for that as well. You can see what days they come, what time of the day they come. So it can either be 12 p.m. or 6 p.m. These two time slots are pretty much safe. And please don't exceed 45 to 60 second reels. It's just a quick, easy to understand advice. Third, don't compromise on the quality. So Play the 12 month game and not the three month game. Now there are a lot of bad shortcuts to just quickly get followers by making content which does not align with your values or your brand or your market positioning. You just start doing it to get that attention. Please don't do that. I would recommend you to aim slow growth and grow a loyal and a niche based audience. So if I talk about AI design and technology, I am not trying to talk about food or travel or lifestyle or just pick any brand collaboration that comes my way. I'm very, very conscious about this loyal following that I have because it is better to have 50K loyal followers who listen and see and watch everything you do rather than have 200K followers who are just there to stalk you. Please don't do that. Make sure that you're targeting the right set of people and aim slow growth. What you have to do is you have to focus on maybe succeeding with five reels in a row. So you can target that for five reels back to back. I will get 50K views minimum, right? So that could be a metric because you have to repeat success again and again. And don't sell yourself too early 
because when you start gaining followers you will get very tempted to maybe sell your stories at a lower rate or maybe sell your posts at 5000 bucks 10000 bucks just you know in this panicking mode you would just pick up brands that don't really align with your values don't do that play the long game not the short game you will get your dues on time so so yes these were a few important lessons that i feel can really really help you grow on instagram through a practical sustainable way if you're here for the first time my name is ansh mehra and i primarily talk about design technology and artificial intelligence there's a free course on my youtube channel which is a 15 episode course on ux design in both hindi and in english apart from that i also published a free course for entrepreneurs or people who are building their own app so this 15 episode course is going to teach you about how to build a design team in both hindi and in english all for free apart from that we've been posting some very very interesting content around ai tools so we've uploaded videos on chat gpt and mid journey and a lot more i would 100% recommend you to check them out if you like this video make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the bell icon and comment your doubts and questions i would be happy to address them make sure that you comment if you have any specific questions or we can cover them in the next video i hope that you're taking care of your mind and body this is your dost ansh mehra signing out If you like this video make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button I regularly upload videos on UX design marketing and storytelling